Yo, what's good YouTube? It's Boardsy and this is going to be my full review of the Razer Death Adder V3 Pro. Around a week ago I posted an initial impressions video and since I've been testing it and this is going to be a full review I've been getting asked to compare it to ergos like the Pulsar X2, the Logitech G703, and just basically all of the other ergos on the market. So this video is going to be that along with an overview of the features because I do think that this is just the best lightweight ergo mouse on the market. People have been asking for a G703 Superlight from Logitech. I'm not going to lie, these shapes are not the same, but it's really the same idea of a super light large ergo mouse and it just passes basically every test. I'm not going to waste a lot of time in this video talking about Razer's wireless tech or the click latency because it's just established that they are like the best in the game right now. So seeing them put that tech in the new Death Adder shell, which is again, not going to be the same shape as the original Death Adder, much closer to an EC clone. I would say out of every Ergo mouse on the market, the absolute closest shape to the Death Adder V3 Pro is the glorious Model D, the standard size. You can see like the side profiles are really similar. It's going to feel bigger than a standard Zowie EC2 in hand, but not as large as something like an EC1. But the main mouse I was getting asked to compare the Death Adder to is the Pulsar X Lite because this is $80 and it's kind of just established as the budget wireless EC clone. So I was getting a lot of comments asking if it's really worth paying $150 for the Death Adder V3 Pro when the x Lite is available for $80 and also if it is worth it for people who have the x Lite to upgrade to the Death Adder V3 Pro. I would say for most people if you have an x Lite and you're satisfied with it you definitely don't need to upgrade but if there's something you don't like about the x Lite or you want to try with the Death Adder um, then it could easily be your endgame ergo like transitioning from the x Lite because I do think that it is just a better product. It makes sense. It's obviously priced much more premiumly, uh, but the x Lite definitely does cut corners in a few places. One thing I've always criticized about the x Lite is the side buttons. They use these dot micro switches that just do not have a high quality feeling. The only way to describe the feeling is really just a cheap and dull click. It's not exactly mushy, um, but yeah, it's just not high quality versus Razer, who I think is using actual micro switches um, for the side buttons, and they just feel very clicky, much more snappy, responsive, and perfect for Fortnite. While I think the uh, X Lite side buttons are pretty meh if you are uh, using them in Fortnite. For other games where side buttons really don't matter, um, it probably won't be as much of a deciding factor, but that's one thing. Also, the x Lite not having a split-off shell, um, it just makes the click implementation pretty weird overall. There's not a lot of travel distance. They also really don't have a lot of tactility for Kill 8.0s, and they do have a somewhat stiff tensioning, but it's still spammable. So all around, just not a great click implementation, while Razer has the split-off clicks and using the v3 optical switches these are a lot lighter to activate a lot more bouncy feeling there is honestly a good bit of pre-travel a bit more than you would like but i don't really click at the top of the mouse so it's not been an issue for me in use um, but the clicks are definitely a bit loose you can see there's some wobble as well so razor definitely doesn't have perfect click quality either but just the general experience using them in game and spamming them it feels a lot more consistent and reliable with the death adder so the buttons i would say are an overall improvement also the coating of the mouse the x Lite just has a very like cheap slippery plasticky feeling and the death adder's coating is no lebron either it is a very chalky feeling coating it's the same as the viper v2 pro but the chalkiness just feels a lot more pronounced it's hard to explain um but yeah this does have a very like pbt keycap like coating i do prefer more rubberized feelings like on the G-Prox Superlight and the XM1R, and I would like to see Razer use those, but it seems like they are pretty dead set on these chalky coatings, which are not bad for me personally, um, but some people I know even do complain that when they sweat, the mouse just gets a lot more slippery. So that may be a problem for some, but I really did not experience any issues with the coating at all. But yeah, definitely features-wise, the x Lite V2 is outclassed by the Death Adder V3 Pro, especially when you get to Sensor, where there is the 4 K polling rate option if you of course get the dongle which has been out of stock for weeks i know people have been uh, complaining about that 
But presuming you do get the hyper pulling rate dongle, is 4000 hertz pulling rate going to be a massive game breaking difference? No, but again, it's going to improve the wireless implementation, give you a better feeling of responsiveness and just a smoother overall like tracking experience. But if you're not somebody who is looking to squeeze every last bit of performance out of your mouse and just want something that is going to be a lot more bang for your buck, then without a doubt, go for the X-Lite. Um, but the Death Adder V3 Pro is really, to my knowledge, the first pro level like lightweight ergo mouse just out so i do think that it's a really dope release in my initial impressions video i said it was basically the super light of ergo mice and honestly i could not agree with myself more if you're a fan of ergos and have medium to large hands and play palm or claw grip really any variation of those grip styles i do think that you will be safe with the death adder v3 pro and even for me personally, not a huge fan of ergos with 21 by 11 centimeter hands, it took me really no time to adjust to this mouse. And it is wide, it is very high profile, but it's just such a safe design that when you just lay your hands on it, you know that you're going to be able to pull off a consistent grip style with it. It definitely caters to more relaxed grip styles, but if you want to aggressively claw it, it is not too wide at the back to actually limit you from doing that. Um, it is much higher profile on the left side, obviously, and that is going to be the big difference between the Death Adder and the g703 because if you see the g703 it actually has the hump of like an ambi mouse basically so it's going to have a totally different like experience in your hand but one thing about the g703 is that it is very aggressive in your palm it is going to fill out your palm and really encourages relaxed grip styles regardless of your hand size where with the death adder it definitely slopes down a bit more aggressively in the back so you can get a more tighter and aggressive grip one thing about the death adder that not a a lot of ergos have is just the very flat side sort towards the top it's pretty common for ergo mice to flare out towards the top of the sides you can see how much it flared out on the original death adder but really um why it doesn't make much sense having flat sides allows for much more freedom in your finger placement so i will say after testing and comparing the mice that i actually do prefer the updated death adder shape that is obviously more ec inspired compared to the original shape which really just has a lot of pronounced curvature but the one thing that i think um, would have benefited the new design is some form of comfort grooves and there are very minor comfort grooves that you can feel but it's just nothing compared to the old death adder but i guess they are just going for the very safe overall design and i'm not gonna lie i really did not expect to like this mouse as much as i did but it's definitely in my top five easily maybe even my top three mice on the market right now um, just because every feature, the tech, the weight. And I honestly do think that I prefer the shape of the Death Adder V3 Pro over the Razer Viper V2 Pro. Um, just the low profile ambi shape versus the high profile ergo shape. It's surprising, but the Death Adder is just a lot more comfortable. I find myself very consistent with it, and it just doesn't have any of the flaws that ergo mice typically have for me and it's just a high quality overall product which once again um, aside from like wired zowie and mice and some others there aren't many i didn't really go into detail about the build quality on my unit everything is solid there's no sort of side flexing or creaking no matter how much pressure i put no rattling there are some minor uh like wobbling and pre-travel issues on my clicks like i mentioned really nothing to note with post travel and yeah, I would say I am overall satisfied with the click experience, the side button experience is spectacular, and the scroll wheel is extremely large. There's nothing wrong with it, it's easy to access, it's a very light, free, a very American feeling scroll wheel. The scroll wheel is notably less notchy on the V3 Pro compared to the Viper V2 Pro and the old Viper Ultimate wheel. So yeah, they did update the scroll wheel and I'm pretty happy with it. The scroll wheel click is light to activate if that matters to you. The stock feet are the same PTFE skates that the Viper V2 Pro comes with, but it is not the same design. As you can see, 
the top right skate is smaller than the top left skate. I believe this top left skate is the same as the Viper Vici Pro, but they did have to modify the design of one of the skates. Um, so I'm sure that aftermarket options will come out for this in the next few weeks or so. But I really have no problems with the stock skates by default. On some slower pads, they did play a bit more controlled than what I would like, but it was never anything that I found to be bad. They do have good rounded edges. So the experience is just very passable out of the box. Obviously battery, it's going to be charging with USB-C and the battery life is gonna depend on the pulling rate. I would say on a thousand hertz, you can get around a week and a half on a single charge. If you go to 2000 hertz pulling, I'd say three to four days. And if you are on 4000 hertz, you're gonna be getting one to two days on a single charge. So that's just gonna vary on use case. But yeah, the Death Adder V3 Pro is definitely going to be getting the seal of approval. I don't remember the last time, if there even was a time that I have enjoyed an Ergo mouse so much. In my experience with wireless Ergos, they're generally either too heavy, they have too much like weird curvature, or they just aren't a complete high quality product. And it seems like Razer has checked all of those boxes um, like I said, shape-wise, it is nothing that's going to blow your mind. If you've tried an EC or just an EC clone, this is going to be very easy to adjust to. It just does have some modifications. This is definitely not the original Death Adder shape, so if you are in love with that, um, you are not going to experience that with the V3, but I don't think it's going to be a massive adjustment for people. It's just going to be a slightly higher profile mouse, and there's not going to be as much curvature on the sides or on the clicks. Um, but yeah, that's basically going to be all for my review. If you have any other questions, make sure to leave them below. $150 is a lot of money for a mouse, no doubt about it. And if you're not somebody who wants the pro grade features that this mouse offers, then it might just not be a product for you. And the x -Lite V2 would be a better fit at $80. But I feel like just all of the features with the 4000 Hertz polling rate as like the cherry on top, it just makes this the best ergo on the market, in my opinion, of course. So yeah, if you are the type of person that is willing to invest a chunk of change into your gaming mouse to get that top tier experience, um, this is definitely a product for you if you like Ergos, especially EC inspired shapes. That's about all for this video. Uh, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. And yeah, I was just shocked by how good this mouse was basically.